Welcome everyone to another episode of the Shaman's Way podcast. As always, this episode comes from the teachings of our amazing friend and shaman in residence, Cricket. We hope you're enjoying these podcasts as much as we enjoy making them, and I'd like to take just a moment to ask you if you would please leave us a rating and a comment in iTunes or whichever podcast player you're listening to us from. Giving us a rating and sharing this podcast with others is the biggest way you can tell us that you like our show. Now, without further ado, on with the episode. Hello, my constant listener, and thank you for coming back to listen to Shaman's Way and to my words. This podcast has been a requested one on the energy of snake, so I want to give you some of my thoughts on snake as a power animal, as a spirit can, or people with snake energy, and some of the history of snake. For the constant listeners, you know who you are, you'll know that I've talked about the moons and the spirit keeper of the freeze up moon is snake and or as some people call it serpent. So the snake is that old and mysterious, maligned and misunderstood member of the reptile family. In the world, there are more than 3,000 species of snakes. In Canada, we have 26 species, mostly, of course, living in southern Canada because central and northern Canada are not always hospitable, although in Alberta we have, we have snakes. I have done a number of circles and teachings to students and to people who come to circle on Ouroboros, I love the symbol of the Ouroboros, the history of Ouroboros, Jungian thoughts on Ouroboros. Ouroboros has, I, th- I believe originally was associated with a dragon, or maybe it was associated with a snake and then became a dragon, but from what I can ascertain, there may not be a conclusive answer. So for this particular podcast, before I go off on a tangent, Ouroboros has long been associated with snake. It, think about it, it represents that life energy and it's flowing through you. It is the ancient snake, you know, the Ouroboros eating its own tail. And what this does, it symbolizes the cycle of life and the eternal return or the life-death life cycle. Even Jung included it as one of his psychological archetypes. One aspect of snake among many, well, many, is that it teaches us about mystery, that capital M mystery. What is mystery? The realms of creation, deep transformation, the balance of nature, adaptability, sensitivity, communication, sexuality, regeneration, patience, self-defense, justice, healing, the feminine, your very own life force. Snake teaches adaptability and the capacity to silently travel where others might fear to go. When we work with the freeze up moon that moon is a great place to learn how to travel between the realms of creation and how to become a messenger for the spiritual aspects of life. The freeze-up moon occurs in the west-north quadrant of the medicine wheel, and it represents that time of coming from life into death or that time of transitioning from mid uh, mid uh, and midday midnight uh, equinox into December which solstice which is that longest night so we have the snake in between that transitional place from illumination to no illumination or from illumination that brightness of light to introspection the dark aspect of self 
It's the position on the medicine wheel, like I said, that teaches us to travel between the realms. The lessons of snake for me have always have been included my energy and my keen insights my keen sights when working with the freeze up moon we are careful to keep ourselves grounded one of the aspects of transitioning from a place of assurance and a place of light into a place of darkness is one of the shadow aspects of that is becoming suspicious so becoming suspicious of people sometimes when we move through the darkness of night or the darkness of the year we become more insular we're tapping into that snake's psyche the underbelly of the snakey psyche as snake sheds its skin I like to think of this also as shedding our illusions and shedding our limitations. Those are very, very easy things to say. However, it is a continual process of shedding our skin. It is a continual process of blinding ourselves to ourselves as a snake sheds its skin. It, its eyes become blind, so the snake in and of itself is blind as it sheds its skin. So we have that death of illusion that death of limitation how do we use our vitality and desires to achieve our wholeness so once we release the illusions once we release our limitations how do we get to that place of wholeness i think snake deserves quite a bit of respect now i know that there are people that are very squeamish about snakes i know that i have fielded one more than one question over the years about <clears throat> pardon me, snake being or presenting itself as a power animal, as a spirit kin. And the people that it is, that it comes to, can be very afraid and not wish to work with snake. Same can also be said for spider. Oftentimes people have a great deal of fear of spider, and spider can also become one of those interesting spirit kin or one of the interesting allies that we work with. I like I give strong honor to and respect to snake. Throughout history, snakes have had so many legends surrounding them. We have legends that link them to creation, fertility, transformation. We have lots of differences between the cultures and the religions. And many of them have emphasized their attitudes towards the snake. And that can be a really interesting indication as to the, the personification of snake within the religion is an interesting personification of the ancientness of that snake. They uncover vistas of the elementary aspects of being alive. So between cultures and between religions, we have really different attitudes in snakes. And these differences also uncover different aspects on elementary parts of being alive. So we'll go into that a little bit deeper as we continue on as we talk. On one level, the differences relate to sexuality, the kundalini awakening, the object of a powerful form of yogic theory. It's been described to me as that coiled serpent at the base of the spine. I know if you've read anything about Kundalini Awakening, you've talked about they've talked about the coiled serpent. If you've had the experience of the the Kundalini Awakening, you've experienced that snake coiled at the base of your at your spine. It's seen as primordial and dormant energy. Oftentimes, you see it in images with three and a half coils at the base of the spine, and it is always centered on the bone, the sacrum, the Latin word for holy bone. I, and this is identified as the last bone to be destroyed when the body is burnt. Fascinating. How the snake and the knowledge that the sacrum is the last thing to be burnt and how those two connected in history I've never looked at but I bet that would be an interesting story if you're looking for a story to find that one might be interesting we see the snake enticing Eve in the Garden of Eden in the Christian mythology many people 
I have theorized that that is Lilith, the first wife of Adam. Lilith, the one who is the dark feminine, the feminine, the, the snake aspect, the truth of life, as opposed to Eve, who is that feminine, two-dimensional aspect of self. Kronos, look at the Celtic fertility god. The legs of Kronos are snakes. So the kundalini is that fire at the base of the spine. As we move emotionally and spiritually, we notice that the energy does rise. Have you worked with your chakras? Have you worked with the guardians of the chakras? I've given instructions on shaman's way as well as in podcasts to work with the chakras. So moving that energy up. There are breaths within yogic practice, which are snake breaths. There's also the use of the tss sound as you make different breaths. So snake has been a part of our physiology or worked into our physiology in some areas of our life experience re regarding where you were from a uh, geographical perspective, I guess I could say. The flow of energy is that aspect of good health. The Greeks, in their own understanding, use the snake as a symbol of healing and wisdom. Uh, we have the caduceus, the symbol of medicine, and being the singular spine and the one snake coming up and representing that energy moving up through the spine, among many other things. The idea of the snake shedding its skin is also used as a metaphor for the reincarnation of soul. In Israel, the snake was regarded as the earth mother and played a role in fertility. In Egypt, the cobra was known for its ability to expand its upper neck into a disc shape by spreading its wings, symbolizing immortality. If we look at Udajet or Wajet, the snake goddess in Egypt mythology. She's a powerful being. And again, if you're looking for a story, dig into her. W-A-D-J-E-T, uh, Wajet. Snake is also considered to represent inner vision. Christian, uh, Christian talks about, Christianity talks about the snake rising from the chalice of St. John, wound around a cross, sometimes portrayed with a woman's head to display lust and temptation. I guess, you know, we all have our own reality in relationship to our sexuality or relationship to sex. Some people don't have a comfortable relationship to sex. Other people have a very comfortable relationship to sex. Uh, and sex meaning not just the act of sex, but sex as in that ever flowed motion and movement of sex, as in snakes having the ability to flow and move through the different, it doesn't matter what sex, what gender, what perception of gender you are, snake, that aspect of sexuality will still flow through you. How your view of that is, is really depending on you, but I if we take this idea of snake as representing sexuality, then we have to take the simple act of sex as not just the only representation of that. To move on from that, I want to bring up the great transformer. It's also, like I talked about, the guide to the underbelly of the psyche. It brings into that shadow aspect of self. To the Celts, sometimes called the Druids, the leaders and teachers in poetry, music, spiritual wisdom, healing, uh, they also used the adders, and uh, it, their snake is an aspect of their own lessons. And I don't know enough about that. I thought I did, and then as my brain is going, I'm thinking, oh, wait, I don't know enough about that. So I'm going to skip to my next thought. So... There is such a contradictory attitude towards snake. We've, we've kind of gone through that. The snake represents aliveness as in expressed in sensuality. In this case, meaning 
feeling and responding to stimuli and more generally to the flow of energy which creates us and makes us alive. So feeling and responding to the rhythm of the drum, feeling and responding to the rhythm of a song, feeling and responding to the rhythm of the a river if you're flowing on the river and feeling the undulation of the river much like the undulation of the snake so we're moving into that aspect of that inner sight that aliveness the ability to react to stimulus when we look at the shedding of the skin we now metamorph into a new being and it's significant with a, for people with a snake as a power animal because it symbolizes your ability to shed beliefs and habits we've outgrown. We talked about that a little bit earlier. So we're moving into a higher spirit, spiritual energy. And the ability to do this is wisdom. The shedding of the skin in some traditions is associated with astral travel and out-of-body experiences. I don't know enough about that to be able to speak to it at any length or certainly with any true depth of understanding, but I did run across that and thought it was an interesting aspect. The eyes of the snake are always open and they are protected by immobile transparent scales. Before shedding their skin, the snake's markings become obscure. And their eyes, it's, you know, if you, I'm sure many listeners probably have snakes. Uh, if you haven't seen a snake, uh, if you've never watched it go through the, the shedding of its skin, I encourage you to see what that actually looks like. The markings become obscure. The eyes, they appear opaque or blue, giving them like a trance-like appearance as if they're looking right through you, learning to see into the hearts of others. That's a part of what we're taught by snake. The deepest level snake skin is shedding symbolizes that death and that rebirth, that Ouroboros. The idea which is depicted again as that snake swallowing its tail, that symbol of eternity. Snake medicine isn't to be taken lightly. Its meaning touches the deepest mysteries of life. If you're ready to shed your own snake skin, snake is ready and waiting to guide you through the spiral path of transformation. On a material level, snake is vitality. In the human level, snake is aliveness. On an emotional level, it could be ambition and dreams. On a mental level, snake medicine could be intellect and power. On the highest level, it can be that spiritual wisdom, understanding, and wholeness. What about being the messenger of the rainbow serpent? What about Quetzalcoatl? What about the birth spirit of the Maya people, of the Maya traditions, of wisdom, of healing, initiation, elusiveness, manipulation of lighting, transmutation, one of my favorite words, exploration of mysteries, primitive, elemental, goddess energy, psychic energy, creativity, immortality, connection to or forming the magic co cord by which you travel in and out of the spirit world. And maybe that's an aspect of the uh, astral travel is the snake being that cord between this world and that world. Snake medicine is the energy of wholeness, cosmic consciousness, and the ability to experience willingly and hopefully without resistance, or at least less resistance than you thought. It's the knowledge that all beings are equal in creation, and that is one. And that, that's, that's part of the message of the rainbow serpent. That's part of the message of, of the richness of the rainbow serpent and, and the snake within there. It's a powerful being. We've talked about transformation. We've talked about healing. It's wise. And its wisdom is expressed through healing. It's a protector and a guardian. So if snake comes into your life, 
Are your creative forces just beginning to awaken? Is your intuition asking to be strengthened? Is your intuition asking to be more accurate? I love the silence of the snakes, how they make little or no noise whatsoever. Often snakes are invisible when resting, and they're unable to produce their own body heat, so we often see them lying in the sun. The sun's warmth together with their behavior regulates their body temperature. They don't rely on the energy of food to generate body heat, and they can survive on scanty diets for long periods of time. I find that very fascinating. So the spirit kin of the snake is perhaps you're cold, perhaps your body temperature is below average, or perhaps you uh, prefer the warmer clients, climates, clients. <laughs> Uh, one of the greatest uh, snake experiences I've ever had, and I don't have a lot of snake experiences in the physical world, was when I was in Belize and walking through a just a, a backyard of a family who had become friends. And he said, look up, look up. And I looked up into the tree, into the coconut tree, and there was this brown, small anaconda coiled around the tree. And the way that it moved was like a spring moving backwards. So the snake moved very slowly up to a place and then its body from being somewhat elongated while still wrapped around the tree shrunk into a tight spring again and up and up shrunk. But it would stop in between and blend back into the tree. It's, that's brown was almost as subtle as the brown bark on the coconut tree. Snake, some of you know the story and some of you don't. Snake is what returned, is the spirit that returned my vision to me. I had worn glasses my whole life. Well, 18 months on is really my whole life. And I was in a journey working with Snake. And in that journey, Snake blinded me. And I was able to see and experience the world of the snake. Snakes don't have eardrums or any external ear openings. Instead, what I experienced was that the small bones in my head conducted sound. And I could hear very low frequency sounds. And I could sense vibrations intensely through all of the parts of my belly that were lying upon the earth. And my link to the underworld, to where the secrets were kept, this part of me to sense the vibrations of the earth. The snake vision was auras as opposed to shapes. It was vibrations as opposed to solid, strict images. And I went around, I was doing a particularly uh, a way of finding out whether or not some, a group of students were ready to learn a particular thing. And as snake, as when I shapeshifted into snake, uh, which was later after I'd been blinded by the snake, and I shapeshifted into snake, I was able to look into the eyes of each of the people that were in my very small circle in my basement in those days. And I was very accurate when I came back from my journey and each person reported where they were on their learning curve and whether or not they were uh, going to take the next step of this learning. And, it, you know, I was accurate with 100% of them based on how snake looked into the eyes. So snake medicine for me represents vision inner vision, exterior vision, snake returned my vision, blinded by snake. And then to learn, 
you know, I think it was a couple of years later that snakes actually go blind during the process of shedding their skin. It was really quite an aha moment for me that blindness in order to turn the eyes inward, that um, ability to see yourself. Snakes, snakes are like frogs in the ability to live in all of the levels of the earth. They, we have snakes that live in the water. We have snakes that live deep, deep, deep into the soil. We have snakes that live in the hottest places in the world. We have snakes that live in the trees. So snakes also, from a physical perspective, represent the ability to travel between the three worlds. That ability to travel between the three worlds also gives you that ability to see between this physical reality and the spiritual reality. And giving yourself the opportunity to experience sight from different aspects. So you experience sight in darkness. How does a snake move in the underground? The tongue which forks out the tasting of the air ahead of you, the tasting of what life is like. You know, for me, I often equate fabulous things to, isn't that scrumptious? That was a delicious dance. That was, oh, you know. So for me, that sensuality of life, that fullness of life, tasting life, devouring life, is, is another aspect of snake among many other animals as well, but we're talking about snake in this particular case. The many different colors of the snake, you know, the ability to shape-shift and transform and to merge in many different environments, whether that environment be a tropical forest or whether that environment be uh, in the amongst the stones and the sand on the Sahara Desert and the color of the snake blending so perfectly with the sand. We blend with our environment based on what our environment requires of us. Could snake be an aspect of representing a mask? Or can we inversely look at it as snake being the opportunity to show our true face? or to sense the world in a richer way with the tongue, with feeling the vibrations and being receptive in the mind vibrations. What is energy? Is vibrations? Thought? Do they create vibrations? Does spirit, when it comes in through the crown chakra, is that a vibration? Are you, do you already have that wide open or that very sensitive head, the small bones that conduct sounds, the low frequency sounds, those sense vibrations traveling through the earth? So what does a snake go through as it moves in the underground tunnels? What does a snake experience when it flows through the water? What does the experience of a snake eating something absolutely whole because it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't need to chew it, it digests it, it crushes it with its bones and its muscles. So a completely different way of ingesting life even, a completely different way of swallowing life whole. Have you ever watched a video where somebody has opened up their mouth and down goes a beer in 1.1 second and the guy beside is like gulping. The term for that is holus bolus, opening up the throat to receive that beer, that liquid, whatever, holus bolus. So does the snake teach you to take life holus bolus and open yourself wide up and say, I'm going to receive this. I'm going to take this into my body. I'm going to crush it and manipulate it and create it and integrate it in a manner that I need. Is that an aspect of snake? Can you relate to snake in your own life in that way? And if not, would you like to? Would you like to crush your limitations or would you like to shed your perceived notions of self? Or maybe perceived notions of someone else or perceived notions of what could or could not be? 
It has fascinated us since the very beginning of time. Maybe not the very beginning of time. I don't know. But snake has been around in our depictions, in our pictures, in our stories, since time immora, since time beginning. There are creation myths about snakes. There are rainbow serpents which descend from the sky. There are feathered serpents which descend from the sky and are bore one way or the other human life. There is the snake goddess. There is the snake Lilith. There is the snake in the Garden of Eden. How does your body feel when I say the snake in the Garden of Eden? Where does it feel? When I say Udijet, the Egyptian snake goddess, where does that sit at with you? How does it feel to wear different personalities of the snake? When I say Ouroboros, what do you think of? What do you imagine? What image comes to mind? Does an image come to mind? Are you going to look it up after I get off here? How can snake influence you? If it's intellectual, if it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's physical. It runs through the four aspects of our condition. Four of the primary aspects. We have many aspects of our condition, but... A wise teacher, a grand teacher, a good teacher. And not always the easiest teacher either. Reminding us, where are we? Who are we? Where do we go from here? What part of the spirit world are you going to explore? Are you going to take an earth snake and travel down? Are you going to transform into a water snake and move so gently, so quietly into and through the water? Are you going to coil yourself around a slender branch so, so green that nothing can see you and wait ever so quietly for your next meal to come? Are you going to be the big boa constrictor to move up through the s trees? One of my favorite snakes in the entire world is the yellow ball python. So beautiful. And there is another viper. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. That is this most astounding turquoise blue, green I'd ever seen. When I work, I often work with a snake shield. And what that means is that snake has been with me as one of my primary guardians for many, many years. And snake winds and coils itself around my body, giving me protection. And this snake is very large. And for the longest time, it was Udichet. It was the Egyptian goddess. And slowly, I thought, I've talked about my shift on the medicine wheel, where I've come from one direction on the medicine wheel into the next direction on the medicine wheel. As a result as well, when I'm calling in my spirits to do uh, particular types of healing works, I, I merge with my authentic self and then I merge with the beings on my left and my right side to protect my left and my right side. And then my extra step is that the snake coils itself around me. Well, as my spirit world has been entirely shifting in many regards, not in all regards, but in many regards, my cobra has now turned into the most beautiful yellow ball python for the lower rings of protection. And slowly it merges into the beautiful turquoise blue of the viper. And atop my head sits the viper, one of the deadliest snakes in the world. That's pretty grand and lovely protection, although the cobra is no slouch in attending and giving death with a bite either. Snake 
therefore for me has been a grand protector, a grand teacher. It literally has given me back my eyesight. I see very clearly in the spirit world when I emerge with snake. I feel incredibly protected with the snake. I have to share this one story with you. I was at a music festival and I was taking some space at the top of this hill and I was standing at the top of the hill and looking down into the bowl and in the bowl is, is uh, uh, the big stage, the main stage. And it's muddy, it had been raining, so people are, you know, they'd been sliding down the hill and having fun and whatnot. And I didn't want anybody in my bubble, in my presence. And when snake comes around me, very often people don't ever cross that boundary or come very close to me physically. This poor young kid, he was inebriated, as you are during, you know, music festivals way up north Alberta. And I saw his foot literally trip over the tail of my snake. And he fell face first and slid down the part of the hill. He didn't get hurt or anything. And I remember my snake, I remember hearing the snake just go, see? And I didn't, so I thought that was actually kind of funny, but to watch a person's foot literally trip over air, knowing that the tail of my snake was right there was a most fascinating and most amusing, uh, I guess, blessed, blessing that reality can come in many forms and many shapes and also recognizing drunken coincidence at the same time. Where does snake fit for you? Where does snake work in your world? Does it work in your world? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel enlightened? Do you feel mesmerized? Do you feel uh, wisdom? Do you feel sly? Do you feel snakish? Do you feel uh, in the underbelly of the snake? Are you feeling the vibrations of the earth? Are you so closely attuned to your own rhythms that you know the vibrations of soul and self? Or, like most of us, can you get there occasionally at least? The mystery, the snake, there's reasons why it has fascinated us for as long as it has, why it has permeated our myths, our dreams, even our nightmares. Why we have snakes on a plane. A movie I never saw, but by golly, I thought the premise was pretty doggone amusing. Uh, so we have the, those, those representations in our culture. I, am, I ask you, if this is of interest to you, to try to slither through some websites or some books or some local place that has snakes and see what they feel like to you. Search their story out. Search their vision out. Search their meaning out. We are all so astoundingly different. And if there are 3,000 types of snakes, then to generalize and say snake means X, Y, Z is to do a huge disservice to the absolute variety and beauty we have that surrounds us. However, we can take aspects of snake and recognize that it is similar across cultures for various reasons and for, and for very strong reasons. Why Jung decided that Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, the dragon eating its tail, the symbol of infinity should actually be its own archetype its own expression of psyche. I want, at a later date, to dedicate a podcast to the anaconda. It is another aspect of snake, but it has a much deeper mystery and has a much deeper and longer story to it. So I look forward to the next time we gather. I look forward to the next time we meet in sound space. Until then, I bid you a fond farewell. 
Thank you again for joining us here on the Shaman's Way podcast. If you have any questions, would like to make a request for a future episode, or if you're looking for other shamanic resources, including free drumming tracks, please visit us at shamansway.net. Until the next episode, be well, everyone.